Welcome to Old Classic Car, and in this collection we're looking at original photographs of classic lorries, vans and pickup trucks. And to begin with, a stunning old photograph here of a diesel Foden lorry parked up on a road approaching Patricroft in Manchester. DNB391, like so that's a Foden, circa 1937 and Manchester registered. What a beautiful old photograph of the tram tracks in the old cobbled streets there. Fantastic. Another wonderful old photo here. Quite a gathering here outside Workman Reed and Co Limited. We've got a Ford CX, an Austin 8 and three dinky little Trojan vans. Um, FLC, that's a London registration from late 1938. And you can just see a Shell petrol pump on the left hand side there. How fantastic is that? Another gem here from the pre-war years, RG106. That is a rare Manchester lorry. Um, it's quite an unusual vehicle. That's Aberdeen registered, circa 1928 or early 1929, I think. But what a fantastic scene. There are some beautiful old lorries and commercial vehicles. This is from the same location. Um, the vehicle that just appeared on the left of the previous photo. And that is another Scottish registered Morris Commercial. This one from the late 1930s. We've got a dog performing tricks there. Like I say, these are all original old photographs of commercial vehicles and there are some real crackers. You may have seen this photo or a similar one of this scene in a previous video. We've got an A40 there that's been on its side and on the right hand side, the main subject of this photo, an Austin A35 van. Um, that's uh, looking a little bit sad. This is Leon C in Essex, Elmsley Drive. It doesn't look much different now. Now a high up view of a, looks like a late 30s lorry, a uh, coal lorry by the look of it, judging by the sign writing on the door. But what is it? I'm guessing a Morris, but I'm not quite sure. There's another great old photograph, often the vehicles are secondary to the people when the original photos were taken, but now it's the vehicles that are of main interest to me. And in the background there is a Ford Model T van sign written as well. What a Bobby Dazzler that must have been. Shame these aren't in colour, but never mind. What great fashions as well, they're incredible. And there's another high up view of an old van. This one is a Morris Light van based on the old Morris Cowley. On the right hand side there is a the little car, oh, that's a Lanchester. Um, possibly an LA-10, but definitely a Lanchester. You can tell the very distinctive shape of the bonnet and the scuttle. What a bobby dazzler this one is too. This is an international, a very long flatbed international truck. And on the back, a pair of Alice Chalmers crawlers. There must be some weight in that. Another great old photograph, probably from the 1950s. The uh, lorry is a Bedford QL. These were built from 1941 to 45. And then the aircraft is a Bristol freighter um, operating with the Royal New Zealand Air Force. And happily, this one is preserved at Christchurch as a museum. Registration NZ5903. Now, what is this? It, it reminded me a little bit of a Goliath, this little three wheeler, but the whole cab and the scuttle appears to be made of tongue and groove wood. So what, what is that little van there? What are we looking at? I really don't know. So let me know in the comments, please, if you know what that is, because I don't. There's a little favourite of mine, the little Fordson, um, usually known as the E83W, but sold as the 10 weight. That Cow 95 is quite an early one, Southampton registered 1939. That's a very early example. It's got the later, larger lamps, and it's a Utilicon which was the Martin Walter conversion. And there's a rear view of the same little van. They took a standard van, fitted windows in the side and seats in the back. Uh, Ford did offer their own version called the estate car. But I think this is a Martin Walter conversion. Very nice too. It's even got a tow bar on the back. Here's a nice one from the, I'm guessing, late 1920s. I think this is a Vauxhall 2060. It was uh, owned and used by the Gomal uh, British Picture Corporation Limited. They did films and news reports and such like and ran various cinemas back in the era. I've seen a photograph of this same vehicle with a camera and tripod on the roof. Now here's an interesting one. The location, I think this one, this parade, is in Sheffield. I've got a variety of lorries there. Um, where an immunity badge, the banner on the first one says. I'm not quite sure what that's about. But yeah, I agree. I mean, what, a, what an incredible scene that is. And again, if that had been in colour, wow. 
There's an interesting one. We've got some uh, army lads here and what appears to be a Morris LC of the late 1930s. Sadly, I don't know where this particular scene was taken. Clearly a railway goods yard somewhere, but where it was, why this photo was taken and who those guys are, I don't know, I'm afraid. Back to America, we've got a cracker here. We've got a Ford Model AA. That's one of the long wheelbase trucks like the one I used to have with an old horse-drawn cart on the back. Look at the state of the door trim on that Ford. And that's definitely a well-used old truck, but what a great old vehicle that is. I do love those. Here we have an international and a lady of the cloth, it would appear. Um, again, I wonder what the, uh, the reason behind this was. Was she off for a trip somewhere, perhaps on a mercy mission somewhere? Who knows? Or maybe she was just blessing the driver of this particular vehicle. But yes, and they've often raised many questions. Now, here we have another Ford E83W, or the 10 weight, another Fordson example. OMX is a London registration series that came in in November 1949. I think this photo was actually taken in Norfolk. But what a cracker that is. Two-tone and sign-written as so many of these old vans and commercials were. Now we head to Arundel. There's Arundel Castle in the background, but the subject of our, well, our main interest, if you like, is that little comma. That's a comma Q25 van. And there's another little Ford E83W in the background there. And then the foreground is a pretty swish looking car, probably an Elvis, I would have thought. But yeah, a great scene. Now, a side on view of an ex military Dodge. I think this was probably just after the war, it'd probably been decommissioned. It looks like a half ton WC42 to me. Uh, panel radio van I would have thought but if you you can confirm or correct that um, please let me know it looks like a military establishment in the background as well over to the Horopito yard thanks to Peter for this photo you may have already seen a collection of photographs from this incredible yard in the 1970s if you haven't seen that yet please have a look that A40 pickup looks as if it had seen a lot of use This is a good old Bedford CA. These were so popular back in the day. This is a Mark 1 with this split two-piece windscreen. And that's a rare canopy, they call those. And that was bodied by Grosvenor. It was sort of half pickup and half extended van body. Um, yeah, quite an interesting compromise between a full pickup or a van. And a series of photographs of this scene, um, this recovery, if you like, appear on the channel already. We've got a Scammell Scarab that somehow had ended up on its side in London. Um, not quite sure what the story is with this one. Many of these were operated by British Railways, of course, very manoeuvrable little vehicles. I'm not quite sure who owned that one though. This is an interesting scene. Again, I wish I knew what was going on here. We've got an old comma lorry of the 1950s and what appears to be a pre-war, possibly vintage uh, Rolls-Royce chassis. Um, I wonder what was going on there. Was it on a one-way trip to the scrapyard or maybe it had been retrieved from a scrapyard and was going to be built up into something else, who knows? Now this was a uh, street view somewhere or other here in England, I'm not quite sure where, but the van on the left, HYH295, appears to be a Jowett Bradford. They had very large rear door windows, so I'm guessing it's a Bradford for that one. There's a publicity view, a side on view of another little Fords and 10 weight, but this is a pig swill recovery vehicle, no less. Uh, I mean, that's a tiny little vehicle, so you wouldn't get much pig swill in there, but what a great thing. It just shows the variety of uses that these little commercial vehicles were put to back in the day. Fantastic. Over to America now, and uh, we appear to have some beekeepers there. And what, But what pickup truck is that? I'm guessing that's an international. Um, we've got a sign just in the foreground there for the National Biscuit Company, in fact. But yeah, bees seem to be the order of the day in this particular scene. Oh, I do like these as well. The Austin K8, the three-way van. Three-way because you've got doors in the front, doors on the side, and doors on the back. These had the engine from the Austin 16 saloon and were built from 1948 through to 1954. These are great looking old vehicles. You so rarely see those now. Back to uh, America or Canada, but I'm guessing American a rear view of an unidentified flatbed truck, um, but it certainly looks well, well used great fashions in evidence in all these old photographs, I particularly like the hats, I'm a big fan of hats, but yeah, what a well used truck that is. And staying with American vehicles, but I think in this country, going off the registration, we've got Jay Pinniger's uh, Ford Model AA truck, very nice indeed, and there's a, you can just see a label or a sign in the screen there for Australian apples, but 
I don't think this was in Australia, but what a great looking old vehicle that is. This will be familiar to many, many people. This is a Bedford TK. These were made for many, many years indeed. And judging by the sign writing on the TK in the background, they were operated by the British Fuel Company. Coal delivery appears to be their uh, raison d'etre, if you like. Here's a real oddball. I do like this. A Tempo Matador. These were built from late 1949 through to 52. Uh, the VW engine front wheel drive and the TAF on the front suggests, I think, tactical air force. Bit of a rear camber going on with those back wheels as well, but what a, what a wild looking vehicle that is. On to slightly more familiar territory now, we have 6881YG, that's an early Austin A35 van, early because it hadn't yet got the flashing indicators that later ones had. And these still had the pop-up semaphore indicators that were a feature of all the A30s that came before the A35. Another one of those photographs from the Manchester area. I think these all related to investigations into road traffic accidents. This says it's a view of the road looking towards Eccles, but a nice pickup truck on the left there. Fresh fish daily, the lettering on the back says, but clearly they weren't delivering fish when that particular photo was taken. But that looks like a lovely old vehicle. Oh, there's my... There's a photo of my old truck in the background there. That was a uh, wartime 1940 Dodge. Originally it was used as a crew bus during World War II. Then it was converted to carry that car, the big Alpha, that you see in the foreground there. This photo dates to about 1951, I think. There are several videos about it elsewhere on the channel. And here we've got a head-on view of an M Reg, nearly early 1970s, comma PB, um, with a cat on the roof. These, these used to be everywhere. I remember British Telecom operating these commas, um, forward control, quite a dump of little things. They used to be everywhere, but now not so much, just a few campers. Now this photo dates to 1954. It's one of a series of photos I've got of a traffic survey undertaken in London. On the left there, we've got another little Fordson 1000 weight van. Very nice example too. Looks like it's seen a bit of action, judging by all those dings on the back. Another much bigger van in the distance as well. But yeah, great stuff. Now a side on view of a Roadster pickup, but I'm not quite sure what it is. I think it's a Ford Model T Roadster pickup uh, with a local rear body. And there is a Model T in the background there under that lean-to, um, but I'm thinking this may even be in Australia with a local body on the back. It's not the usual pickup body that you see there. And staying with Fords, we've got a Model TT van here. A BVC vacuum cleaning service. Not the best photo in the world, but a great subject, so I had to include it here. Um, this was based in Broad Street, Birmingham, according to the old sign writing on the side there. But yeah, what a survivor photo that is from over 100 years ago. And this an incredible articulated truck is a Mercedes-Benz W23. Um, quite an interesting looking vehicle. And alongside that, a snouted I think, is that a Megairus Deutz? I could be wrong on that one. I'm not too well up on my German lorries. Um, but if you know what that particular vehicle is, please let me know. Another classic British vehicle here. This is a Beardmore articulated with a couple of trailers on the back. You can see wartime spec white paint daubed onto the edge of the wheel arches. That was a, a blackout requirement in London during the war. Another of those photographs from the Manchester area, a view of the East Lanks Road looking towards Worsley. And on the right there we've got an old van that appears to have a bit of a coming together with a 1930s standard saloon. I wonder what the story with that one is. I wonder what that road looks like now, the East Lanks going towards Worsley. I'm sure it looks very different to that now. Another photo that I have very scant information on, there's an MAN lorry in the background there and one of those markers uh, stuck to the front wing there just to give the driver an idea of where the the extremities of his bodywork is, but um, yeah, quite an unusual sight. Not the best photo in the world, but it's an unusual subject, so it made it into this. Now, what a, I do love these old photographs. I mean, this is from the 1920s. We've got another Ford Model TT, um, but what a crack, and that is right-hand drive. So probably built at their Ford's plant at Trafford Park. Um, but yeah, Martin Brothers shirt and collar dresses general laundryman and you can see the sign right on the building behind it matches that now over to the usa and according to the note on the back of this photo it's pea harvest time um, it says 1940 but i think it's more likely 41 judging by the second vehicle along which is a 41 onwards chevrolet and the location is la crosse in washington what a great lineup of very overloaded vehicles there's another closer in view of the same lineup 
you've got a what a 39 chevrolet i think on the left there and a 41 onward chevy alongside it next to that an international there is a a brochure review elsewhere on the channel for one of those old international lorries um, so check that out if you haven't yet seen it and here we've got another 39 chevrolet half ton pickup truck what a cracker that is the styling of um, american vehicles often changed year on year so you can often pin them down quite closely with a little bit of research and this one appears to be a 39 Another one of Peter Ward's photos from the Horopito Yard in New Zealand. And this is a super rare Austin A99 Westminster Ute or Utility. Um, yeah, often vehicles were shipped over to Australia and New Zealand in part complete form and then bodied locally. And I think that's probably the case with this one. Uh, are there any of those still around? Now we've got a lineup of military vehicles here. There's an Austin on the left, probably a K4, I would have thought. And an ex wartime Bedford. Not quite sure what the third one along is, I'm sure someone will know. And a couple of Tillys, we've got a Hillman Tilly and an Austin 8 Tilly and an L series Vauxhall on the end there. There's nothing new in electric vehicles and here we have a promotional vehicle for an electric van of, I'm guessing, the 1930s, judging by the spoked wheels on this one. It certainly looks fairly early. Use electricity always and it looks like a parade vehicle on the right hand side so clearly there was a bit of a run going on somewhere and here a Jowett Bradford utility sort of the estate car version if you like of the Jowett Bradford made up in Yorkshire this one complete with a metal L plate hanging off the front bumper and in the background an E93A Ford Prefect I do love looking at all these old photographs often in the background and here we've got a young chap um, somewhere in America with an unidentified American panel van just behind him all sign written of course so maybe it was his first day on the job who knows but obviously very proud of his van kept in very nice shiny condition too perhaps it was brand new when this photo was taken and here's an old ford publicity photograph this i think is a model y based ford tug so it had the eight horse engine three wheeler so it's quite maneuverable the standard 933 cc side valve engine under the bonnet of that one are there any of those still around there may be one or two survivors but i can't imagine there are many now these i do like this is a renault juva catra van they also did estate versions and saloons but these little vans i think are very appealing indeed and i could be very tempted to buy one of those you do see them advertised in france fairly regularly now there's a one or two websites over there which list these vehicles and here a roadside picnic and a, a feast of vehicles we've got an a40 in the background there uh, it's an interesting coach built estate car body but the van is a morris 8 500 weight van that's a rare old girl and there's a 400 e in front of it but that little morris van that's a rare thing indeed now staying with morris we've got a morris z van here one of the post office telephones vans i think these were the ones with the rubber front wings and you can tell the, the gpo or the post office vans because they have those uh, carriage style door handles um, whereas the regular Z vans have had regular door handles. I'm not quite sure why they went with those, but never mind. And I think we are probably in Australia for this one. This is a circa 1950 Ford Ute or Coupe Utility, as they were technically called. But yeah, that's a rare old thing. Split two piece windscreen. Um, but yeah, I'm sure that's 1950. Now the E83W, the grill's looking a little bit bent on this one, LRE431. That's a Staffordshire registered van from 1944 or 45. Of course, during the war, you had to sort of prove essential requirements in order to qualify to buy one of the very few new vehicles that were being built at the time. But this is a pre-war vehicle now, cracking old Morris commercial leader. And that registration OS points to Wigtownshire up in Scotland. And the uh, driver photographed with his trusty van there. Back to that Horopito yard in the 1970s and a feast again of interesting vehicles. But in the middle, another example of a Jowett Bradford. That's a rare old girl. Sadly, I think it had reached the end of the road, but the yard is still in operation, so it may still be there. Now we've got a military vehicle here, but I'm not too well up on my old army truck. So if you can identify this one for me, please let me know. I looked at all manner of photos of V8 Ford trucks and 
internationals and Chevys and so on. Uh, the one or two Fords had very similar wheels, but not quite the same tin work on the front. So I'm not quite sure what we're looking at. And again, another military vehicle here. I mean, I'm guessing this may be a GMC or something like that in the foreground. I'm not quite sure what's going on. Is that is that a prisoner in the back there, or is it just a group of uh, I don't know, a group of soldiers en route to somewhere else? And there's another vehicle in the front as well. I think that's probably a Dodge, but I forget the uh, particular model. And staying with American vehicles for a bit, we've got another example of the Ford Model TT truck. What a great scene that is. Maybe one or two families there proudly posed with it. There's quite a few people sat in the back, so clearly they're off somewhere on a trip. What a great old vehicle that is. No brakes on the front, of course, just on the back. Much more recent now, the 1960s, and we've got a race paddock somewhere or other. Maybe Brands Hatch, perhaps, I would have thought. So Marcos and a much modified Cobra in the background, but there is a BMC J4 panel van. These were badged either as Austin or Morris. You could have either, depending on your preference, but yeah, one of BMC's really popular vans. Now, what do we have here? We're back in America, I think, I suspect, but what are these vehicles? I'm not quite sure. Um, the one on the right looks a bit Dodge-like, um, but the one on the left, I'm not so sure, maybe Chevrolet. I really don't quite know, so again, if you can sort of add information, please do so. Now we're over in France somewhere, and there's a cracking little 2CV base van on the right-hand side, and unusually an English registered standard. I think that's a standard 12, it's a post-war car. Next to that, on the left, is a rare Simca 8 Sport convertible. So plenty going on in that old photograph, fantastic. Oh, another beautiful vintage scene here. Now, I think this is a circa 1927 or 28 Morris Commercial, Birmingham registered, the OX registration series. What a cracking thing that is. Again, wonderful old sign writing on the side of this van. Uh, beautiful. And there's a rear view of the same vehicle. Nice old corrugated building on the left-hand side as well, because many people are fans of old corrugated iron buildings. But yeah, that is just a lovely little van, isn't it? Manufacturers of Sauces and Pickles, Lewis Beck Limited, Becksville, Worcester. Head on view now of an Austin Lodestar. Um, this was a, the basis, of course, for the Austin K9, the militarized version. But this is a standard civilian road going uh, recovery truck by the look of it, based on the Lodestar 30 OCV is the registration on this one. Great looking little lorries. Back to America, I think, and a very, very muddy looking Ford Model AA. This one on those spoked wheels. So it's about 1928 or 1929. Look at the chains on the back wheels there and that guy trying to lever the this wheels out of the mud. Oh dear, he's got himself well and truly stuck there. It's a slightly more cleaner environs and a lovely little Morris. I think that's a Morris. Uh, delivery van WL6505 delivering to that uh, shop there. Lion's Tea on that big enamel sign. All very civilised. Here, uh, this is a UK scene, American van. On the side it says the Stratford War Relief Committee and this was a van being delivered to Stratford-upon-Avon, I think, if I remember correctly. There were some notes on the back of this photo. But clearly the, the funds have been raised in the States in order to fund an ambulance over here. Probably one of the oldest photos in this collection of lorries and so on. Ah, oh, is this wonderful steam lorry. Now, maybe you can help me out with this one. I'm guessing it's a Thornycroft, perhaps, a flatbed steam lorry, but what a cracking thing that is. That's just incredible. Can you imagine driving that? No pneumatic tires or anything on these. I think this was at Dagenham, Ford's Dagenham plant, and we've got an early Ford's and 500 weight van, possibly an EO4C. It could be the uh, 7Y based van, but yeah, that's quite an early vehicle. And it's just showing off an example of what how a sign written van may have looked. I think that was just a random example. Now, BAK569, this photo was taken in the 1950s, but the van is a sort of 32 to 34 Austin 10 4 van that's clearly being used for a camping trip of some kind and uh, sitting a bit low on its wheels but you notice the solid disc wheels so that differentiates it from the cars now to germany in world war ii and we've got a lady here in front of what appears to be an opal blitz army truck and similar to the vehicles in this country at the time it's got the uh, blackout light covers on the uh, headlamps there 
And there's a bonny little Morris J-Type here, or JB. And the J-Type was the original one with a four-cylinder side valve engine. This appears to be a Utilicon with the uh, extra windows in the back and seats. And uh, yeah, really, really nice indeed. The later JB had the overhead valve B-series engine, which probably made it a little bit more usable. Now here, we have another Ford model TT truck. What a cracker that is. Ask your retailer for Stereo's boots. Wear guaranteed. Very, very nice indeed. Now we have a comma, a comma super poise with a very unusual body on the back. Is that some sort of ice cream delivery vehicle? It's certainly a jazzy colour scheme and behind it, a super rare console estate, a Mark II Ford console estate. There's a hundred there over on the right hand side there, but yeah, cracking comma. Another Morris J type Utilicon, but this one has clearly seen a bit of action. It looks like it's been over on its roof or at least on its side. And it just shows how little structure there really was inside these rear bodies. I mean, it's clearly well collapsed. Was that rebuildable? I doubt it somehow, but you never know. People were quite resourceful back then. Another gem of a vintage lorry photo here. In the livery of the County Borough of Stoke-on-Trent Sewage Department. But what is the lorry? Do you know what lorry this is? I'm not entirely sure myself, but I'm sure someone watching this will know. chap here with MHT354. This is an Austin K2. That's a Bristol registration, um, mid-1949 or thereabouts. And there's a bit of water in the background. Maybe that's the River Severn uh, being so close to Bristol, of course. But yes, a lovely old Austin K2. Very characterful rival to the Bedfords of the day. And here we've got three people playing in what appears to be an abandoned Ford Model AA chassis and cab. Now, if that's got the tin roof, that dates it to about 1931. And prior to that, they had sort of a composite material and wood and steel roof, but 31, it was all metal. Now, still with Ford, and we've got another Ford Model T van, an original photo of a Model T van. I wonder what that sign writing says. Just a tempting, tantalizing couple of letters there. We can't see any more than that. They're a very young lad, uh, enjoying a woodbine by the look of it. A little 10 hundred weight Ford here. This is a fairly early one. Not the best photo in the world, I'm afraid, but it's such an interesting vehicle. Coach built rear body. I thought I had to include it in this particular collection. Yeah, it's a Ford, and so it could be late 30s. I mean, these were introduced in 1938 and built all the way through to 57, but I'm guessing this is about 39. And here's one taking a drink, a Shell Chemicals lorry. I think this is a AEC Mammoth Major Mark III, possibly at the Stanler Oil Refinery in the 1950s, but maybe someone had left the handbrake off. I'm not quite sure what happened here, but yeah, certainly an interesting photograph, and uh, so clearly someone was having a bad day. Now, a side view of a Ford Model T canopy. I think that's what you call those, where you've got those uh, the canvas roofs with the lift-up sides and a shell can, a shell motor spirit petrol can you can see on the running board. Now whether this is America or Australia, I'm not entirely sure. By the way, very interesting. As is this, um, registered BRJ558 and the notes on the back say that this is a circa 1946 to 1950 7-ton sedan XBRS and set to be uh, refurbished. I mean, look at the tyres on that. <laughs> Not much tread left on there. We've got a Morris 8 Series E in the background. But yeah, great old photo. Now to Morecambe and ice cream sales. And we've got B. Lewis's incredible Morris-based ice cream van. Ice cream fresh daily, it says. B. Lewis pure ices. This was the era of the Morris Oxford, of course. And this one registered XTF 38. Now you're going to have to help me with this one. We've got a World War One era, or Great War era truck here. But what are we looking at? I've looked at all manner of vehicles. The legend on the radiator actually says Bo Vista. Um, great view, and that translates. So whether someone's added that, I'm not quite sure. But what lorry is that? I'm really not sure. And this is an old family photo. We did have relatives in Mid Wales, and they worked in the agricultural sector for quite a while. And the van on the right hand side, that's a lovely little Comma 800 weight van. So rare those, based on the contemporary Hillman Minx of course, but that's a rare, super rare van. I'd love to find that somewhere. I won't mind finding one of these either. This is an REF, I think, Austin 8 Tilly. Great little Austin 8 base truck. Some of these were Taurus in the military and some of them were converted in Tillys. These little pickup trucks with a canvas cover over the back, the canvas tilt. 
Um, but yeah, what a cracking little vehicle that is. Back to America, and we have a very shiny late 30s, so about 1937, 8 or 9, Chevrolet half-ton stepside pickup truck. The uh, pickup trucks of this era, I just think, are stunning. Still plenty of these original old photos of lorries, vans and pickup trucks to come. And here we've got a public address service van. Now, what is this? It could either be an Austin 152 or the Morris badge to Morris J2. Not quite sure which one this is. Um, that appears to be, is that Prince Philip stood over on the right hand side there? It looks a bit like him. Uh, clearly at a sports day somewhere. Another classic E83 W van here. Now this is a later Thames van from the 1950s. You can see the little badge, the little flash on the side of the bonnet there. So that tells us that this is a Thames version as opposed to the earlier Fordsons. Uh, totally standard panel van. Great stuff. Another Ford here, and this is another Ford model TT. Again, not the best photo in the world, but they're so atmospheric with all the old sign writing on the van and the Spratt's cakes, dog cakes, I think that says, on the building. Uh, yeah, fantastic. Interesting lineup here. I'm not quite sure what the van in the middle is, or oh, the truck rather, in the middle. Um, but the others are Maudsley Mustangs. Um, Acme, what's that? Acme Sandstorm tiles are advertised on the side. GH Downing and Co. Limited of Chesterton in Staffordshire. But yeah, rare Maudsley trucks. Now, it's a wonderful, wonderful old vintage photograph here. A side on view of a Thornycroft. Again, on solid, non pneumatic tyres, just solid, very thin, solid rubber tyres on those wheels. What must it have been like operating a vehicle like that in the early 1920s? But beautifully sign written as always. Much, much more recent though is this little Thames. This is a Thames 300E panel van, uh, related of course to the Ford 100E Escort and the Squire Estates. Use the same basic body, um, albeit with side hinged doors on the back of the van. But yeah, quite rare to see a good one of those now. Now, two photographs of Invincible. This is an incredible old steam lorry which appears to be on fire. It's a Garrett undertype. I did research this one a little bit back. It's a six wheel platform lorry and the, uh, it was originally owned by J.E. Neath of Nottingham and delivered to them on the 1st of October of 1928. And there's a review of the same vehicle. The fire brigade have been called out so clearly something was amiss. Um, obviously fire is involved in generating the steam but maybe it travelled a little bit further than it's meant to do. But yeah, a cracking old steam lorry. Uh, fantastic. In a group of old photographs of cycle racing, I found this one. Uh, on the right hand side there is another Fordson 500 weight Scullion's radio. So clearly that was a broadcasting, to perhaps a local radio or something like that. Or maybe just as a speaker van for the crowds who are watching. But yeah, that's a rare little van that is. And from the same set of cycling photographs, um, we'll ignore the cycles for now. But in the background is a lovely Austin A40 van. Thanks so much for sticking with this uh, collection so far and back to America, Chicago, Illinois, according to the uh, legend on the door and an international late 1930s international panel van. Um, like I say, there is a brochure review for lorries of this era, international lorries of this era elsewhere on the channel. So if you like your old literature, um, please check that out when you're finished here. And another little Fordson here, a little 10 hundred weight UMP 706, looking pretty battered. Is it missing a headlamp lens on the right hand side? The front wings are looking well bashed about. These little vans and pickups were certainly worked very hard indeed. And I doubt this one survived much longer after this photo was taken. Now another little van here, proud chap stood next to his van, um, obviously based in Oxford. 81 to 82, the market Oxford, E. Gibbard and son. What is the van? I'm not entirely sure. Possibly Chevrolet, um, but I'm not entirely sure on that one. You can just about see the radiator. I wonder what that lad's peeking at through the fence there. But in the foreground, we've got PGC 306, another Austin A40 van. That's quite a late one. The early ones had removable full wheel spats at the back. But sort of by the late 1950s, they'd gone to that normal conventional rear wheel arch. 
another snapshot here clearly the, the two ladies were the subject of the photo but in the background is a brewer's dray a beer delivery lorry with trailer very nice indeed burtonwood brewery it says on the back of the trailer and you can just see a chap there ready to roll another barrel of beer off the back now we're down in london outside the establishment and in the foreground we've got a thames 307e the van equivalent if you like of the ford anglia 105e but these are really nice note how the bottom edge of the driver's door curves up that was designed to avoid curbs if you swung the door in too quickly now three people here and another ex-military bedford quite what's going on here i'm not sure has it been uh, it could possibly have been sold off by this point in time because they don't appear to be in military clothing so maybe they just bought this from a disposal auction perhaps this i think is probably a publicity photo issued by the coach builder whoever was responsible for this uh, Austin Van 562LTT. TT is a Devon area registration by A40, which came from Exmouth, or Exeter rather, is FTT. So that's how I know where TT comes from. Now, military again, and we mentioned the Austin Lodestar earlier on, and the K9. There's two examples of the K9 on the left there. And then we have in the middle, we have a Fordson or Thames 4D or ET6 van, and nearest the camera, a Morris J2 minibus. It has a really interesting little vehicle. This is a DKW Schnell Aster, or the F89L to give it its factory name. These were introduced in 1949. They had a two-stroke engine and very characterful little vans indeed. I saw one of these at the NEC a little while ago and it was a great little van. Another one of Peter's photos in New Zealand. We've got Bedford on the left. I'm not quite sure what's that one in the middle. Um, but on the right hand side, that's a rare Austin A70 based pickup truck based on the A70 Hampshire. That's a rare old thing indeed. All of them were for sale at the time. I wonder if any of those survive. <laughs> and here's another one that I need help identifying, please. Um, clearly, there was a bit of an issue with the uh, loading or the weight distribution of the, that very large load on the back. Um, but yeah, if you can identify this particular truck, please uh, pop a note into the comments because it's always good to read the information that you can provide on these images. I think this was probably at a holiday chalet somewhere and we've just got appearing in the background there, side view of a, well, rare now, Austin 10 van. Really nice. Still a few more of these photos to come, don't worry. And here, London Transport, and we have a very smartly dressed gent just about to climb into his Austin K2 lorry. Very similar to Bedford's, like I said, but the, the Austins had a very distinctive window opening and the door curved at the bottom, and that's how you can often identify the Austins from the Bedfords of the era. Back to Ford, and another little Ford 300E panel van. couple of photos now I think from a foreign coach builder we've got a cracking little van here with a local sign writing but what is the van I'm not entirely sure what this van is but if you know please pop a note into the comments that one I'm not quite sure of but this one you can tell by the steering wheel as much as anything but um, they have a very sort of interesting shape of steering wheel but this is based on the Ford Model T so this is a locally bodied Ford Model T van There we have a Comma Cobb, which was a van version of the Hillman Husky estate car, which of course was based on the Hillman Minx. There's a Thames 400E just appearing on the right hand side, clearly a camping trip. But putting this uh, collection together was a real pleasure because I always I love pouring through old photographs and commercial vehicles in particular. I just find really, really interesting. Now we have a side on view of a Morris Y van, a Y type van, very similar to the Ford E83W of the era. These were introduced in the late 1940s, I think. This one's got added windows and curtains. So clearly it was used as a bit of a camper by the look of it. And we've got a roadside picnic. And two likely lads here and a wimpy lorry. Now this lorry, it's a Thames. It could be the uh, ET6, which had the petrol engine, or the 4D, which had the diesel engine. I'm not sure which one this is, but either way, 
Looks well used and pretty grubby, as most vans did back then. This is an old photograph, a large format photo that I've got printed on card. I'm not quite sure where this came from, but it's a wonderful study of a... Well, it's a, that's a little Ford, isn't it? A little Ford pickup truck, a Ford Model Y pickup truck in the livery of Wilson Brothers, building contractors of Streatham. But yeah, what a bonny little vehicle that is. Back to the military, and we've got a mighty old Leyland here, as the badge on the front suggests. This, I think, is a Leyland Retriever, a 6x4. These are the 6-litre, four-cylinder overhead cam engine that were built from 1939 onwards and used extensively during the Second World War. Two photographs now coming up of Sidmouth. Now on the left hand side there's another example of those the Morris Y van and the later Morris van in front of it. On the right we've got a comma, a three-way comma in the livery of British Railways. What a great scene that is. I wonder what it looks like now. Probably not that much different. And this is also in Sidmouth, Sidmouth Ford and we've got an Austin A40 van traversing the Ford. Don't forget to check out some of the other old photo collection videos here on the old classic car channel because there are loads here now. We've got a trio of young ladies here and another Dodge, probably another WC42 radio van, similar to the one that we saw much earlier in this particular video. Back in America and we have a Ford Model T Roadster pickup on a camping trip. Some interesting vehicles on the left in the background as well. Um, we all call them model, uh, Roadster pickups now, but in the factory literature they call them the Ford Runabout with pickup body. But yeah, you've got a folding roof and a pickup body. Another one of Peter's photos here in the 1960s. We've got a Morris Minor based van there, 923 or 927. SMX and behind it's so another example of the Thames 307E Anglia based van. So two for the price of one in this photo. Excellent stuff. Royal Mail liveried van here. This is an Austin or Morris LD. These were a walkthrough van so you had sliding doors either side so you could hop out either side depending on where your deliveries or collections were taking place. But this one looks to be in really good condition. You'd be better off as a postman, the poster on the side says. A snowy scene here in the early 1960s, there's an Anglia on the left of course, but the van interest centres around the little 400E there, covered in snow and facing a minivan. And behind that there's a much bigger lorry, I'm not quite sure what that is, possibly a comma or something like that. But yeah, all good fun. Another military photo here, and there's the name of Irene above the screen of this Dodge. It's, a, this, it's obviously an American designed vehicle, but being right hand drive, that makes this a Canadian built Dodge. Probably a two ton, I would have thought. What a great scene here with a little Ford Model T van. A lady there supping her cup of tea from the best china on the left there, and a flowery hat on. Yeah, what a great old scene that is. Beautiful. I just love the, the, everything about these old photographs. I just think you can't match them. They're just fantastic. Young lady on the right there as well with her brolly. Now we've got a chap here look, standing proudly next to his comma super poise lorry. Very nice indeed too. An HU226. Very similar to the old comma that I had until last year. Sadly that one had to go. And in the background a 4083W. Quite an early one with the tiny headlamps. Another Austin K8 here, another Austin K8 three-way van. Like I say, these are the 2.2 litre engine out of the uh, contemporary Austin 16. This one was a travelling shop up in Lossiemouth, it says. William Plimbley was the owner of this particular van. All right, Dale. And here we have a Reliant Supervan 3, the fiberglass three-wheeled Reliant Supervan. In the background, a comma ice cream van as well, and a bus. Oof, could it get any better than that? Back down to Dagenham and a head-on view. This was a publicity photo from Ford of the 500 weight Fords and these are very similar to the contemporary Anglias under the skin, similar engine, running gear, chassis and so on. The slightly larger 1000 weight van was a very different animal indeed under the skin. What a Belter. This one is up in Hull, Pedders Limited, Quality Ices, a stunning, look at the shape of the back of it and the roof, an A40 based, Austin A40 based 
ice cream bun. Wow. Back to Peter's photos from Horopito Motors, like it says there, check out the photo collection um, of this incredible New Zealand scrapyard. There we've got a late 1930s barrel grilled Ford truck, pickup truck. But yeah, I wonder if that's still there. I bet it probably is, to be honest. If you've got a photo of it more recently, please send it over. And here we have a mighty Antar. This was, uh, these were used for towing really heavy duty army kit tanks and so on. The Thornycroft Antar, amazing vehicles. You do see these occasionally at steam rallies and incredible things they are too. Proper, proper engineering. And to round out this collection of old photographs and pictures of lorries, vans and pickup trucks, we've got this, the steel bodied Ford 10 weight pickup truck, quite rare. And that rounds it out. So thank you very much for watching this particular collection. All these original photos of lorries, vans and pickup trucks were just great to assemble. I really enjoyed putting this one together. Let me know in the comments if you're interested in this kind of thing too and have a look around the rest of the channel before you disappear. Have a great day and there'll be more videos along very, very soon. So bye for now.